very much for joining us for our first game of the day. Ninja oh, yes. Pajamas versus Thunder Talk Gaming. We get ourselves into draft for game one. Lots of uh, bot lane bans. No surprise to see one XN having his Lucian, Varus, and Callista removed, but both control also being hit with the bot lane ban of Senna. Yeah, I wonder whether Smolder comes out as well and will have five AD carry bans off the table immediately. It has felt like the way of drafting in the LPL the last couple days. Instead, it's the RE, and that does leave Smolder yeah. up. Is this a question mark on Fodix ability to play it? Or is it just perhaps a little bit over bold? Mm. They've left the karma up and that, that goes over, so Smolder's not picked. Does that mean it's going over to 1XN well, Chocho? I think we're seeing more research and development for um, Smolder picks and bans and counters. Um, because I feel like with OMG picking Twitch the other day, I actually think Twitch does very well versus Smolder 2. Oh, yeah. Now, it's something you have to practice. It is a bot lane assassin, but without the mobility of something like a Kaiser. Kaiser's also good into the Smolder as well. Feels like there are a couple of answers there. Page one, gonna pick up uh, the Shin Sao. He's mainly gone towards in this split. It's solid. Both of these picks not really showing their hand yet. These don't define your composition. No, they've both been relatively flexible in terms of the kind of styles you want to play. I don't think off way for you, Cal, could be a surprise in the slightest. He's really indexed into the champions. Final. A lot of success with it. There's the Smolder. It gets all the way through to B2-3. Nautilus likely to come alongside it. And you've got Smolder with frontline and shielding. And IP very pleased with that, I suspect. I think Nautilus, um, that's kind of an evolution of some of the bot lane understanding that we've seen, which is you just engage onto him over and over. So if you pick the Alistair or the Brawn, the Nautilus just goes in, and then even though typically the Nautilus is a bad matchup into those supports, because you're against the Smolder early game, you can make it work, because he's not the best, most damaging champion. Koya was a big Renekton player last year. He's going to pick it up again. He has had an awkward year. I have to say, Hoya has probably been the cause of a lot of TT's yeah. losses in the games where he slipped up too. So he's onto something a bit more comfortable there, where he can be a bit more isolated and top lane. Hopefully that can help him right the ship as TT try and fire off. Especially as well, you count earlier in the split wasn't really firing on all cylinders. It has felt over the last couple series, the guy's kind of woken up a fair amount. But still got to see some improvement over the whole of the split from other members. See if they can make that happen. We are into the second phase of bans. More of the jungle folks from TT. The Viego's off the table, despite I know you were saying necessarily something you've expected of Aki as much. Still obviously becoming increasingly popular, so just getting rid of it. Kaiser on the other side, you called it out, it's a good option into the Smolder. I wonder whether they do ban something like the Twitch as well. Maybe they've been listening to what's been going on in various other kitchens around the LPL <laughs> and decided don't want to have to deal with that particular avant-garde dish. And particularly since there's nothing like a Braum locked in to kind of uh, immediately shut down the Twitch ultimate with the, with the E. Maybe that would be valuable in itself. Onyxan and Chocho, what have they been cooking? No bot lane picks locked in for them so far. They are going to have a number of options removed. The only reason you let this and many AD carry bans go through is when you've got something specific in mind. Surely, if you haven't, then I think this is a mistake. Banning the Zeri, which has been one of the scale up alongside them answers. Now, this has been Onyxan's probably most famous individual pick, but... I don't know, if you're playing scaling for scaling, you have to be on point. Um, typically, we have seen scaling for scaling favor the Smolder. This is why I like the more out there answers. I don't know if I like this on paper. Does also leave Chocho with the ability to do something a little bit wild in support. We'll wait and see whether it's locked in and they are kind of eventually going for the Maokai. Mm. The Felios left alone and that does leave AD carry to last pick. Maybe there's still something a little bit spicy in the pocket, or maybe they just didn't feel off. happy locking the Aethelios a little bit too blind. But again, you're leaving your AD carry to last pick, and now you have a very low damage composition. Yeah. You have the Hui in the mid lane, but the Marko, Renax, and the Shinsa, they'll do fine early, but they will fall off a cliff if another ta another support, yeah, another tanky kind of champion is locked in. Now we could be seeing uh, the return of oh, yes. uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion getting the damn ro robot Shanji. That's it, that's it. <laughs> As he locks in the rumble for topside. Did we use this? Oh wait, is it? Is it, is it, it was OM Genesis. Yeah, it was OM Genesis back then. Was OM. I haven't quite found a way to put. It. It's, it's not nin, Ninja Genesis. Even Gen look, we'll workshop it either way. It's a bit of a work in progress. But that is going to be now very powerful if you have any of these champions locked down by a Vi, a Nautilus, and then the Rumble all over the top of it. This is classic Shanji Aki topside. And what are you going to do now to try and survive this combo? I don't like a static carry. If you are locking in someone like the Jinx or Aphelios, I think you're just going to get burned down by the ultimates. I think TT needs to be really careful about thinking about this. It's just the hover right now. It's still worth saying that alongside the Aphelios, the other champion at 1xN did put a lot of time and had a lot of success on the LDL was the Jinx. He was imperious on the champion. 
go towards the Aphelios. If you look up his numbers, they're not that fantastic yep. in terms of the win rate on the Aphelios. But I tell you now, you go back and watch those LDL games, you go back and watch the games in which he has put on the Aphelios and still lost, he has nearly invariably put on an impressive individual showing. The amount of three weapon combos this guy pulls out on Aphelios, which is really hard to do, is very, very impressive. It is what he picks when he feels he has to 1v9 in a challenging scenario. And this is going to be a challenging scenario. If you ever get pinged by one of these big point of click ultimates, the wrath of the heavens is going to come down. You're going to have a smolder ultimate coming down, the rumble with another kind of trail of fire. The lit, the ground is going to be absolutely charred to a crisp. So I really think that NIP walk away with a pretty confident draft. It's one with the look which a lot of their players feel comfortable with too. It's one of the first rumbles we've seen from the split from Shanji as well, which he did made so much of an impact on last year. He needs to step up. He's had some pretty weak games recently. And this is the kind of game where he has a lot of agency to do so. I think as well, looking through this and you're going, I feel like NIP have got the more comp of the moment. They've got more of that meta composition. They've got themselves, yes, the Rumble, which is perhaps a little bit more unusual considering how popular it was not so long ago. On the other side, though, no, actually, we're looking at a composition which is a little more unusual. The Aphelios coming in kind of slightly out of meta, out of season. It's not linked up with something like a Lulu, which we saw work really well over for Gen G when they made it work against T1 in that very dominating 2-0 they had over there. So it's not the Enchanter backing up the Aphelios. It still makes sense mm. as a composition, right? It's front to back with an Aphelios and a Quay. You can play that composition out. You've got a lot of burst, a lot of damage. You can definitely play that out. But it might be easier said than done, I think, with the champions on paper. And uh, going back to comfort, Shandy's Rumble. One extends Aphelios. Aphelios uh, for this guy. He brought it out in his third ever game. Well, he brought it out in all three of his first three games of the LPL. And... His first game against Top Esports, only his second series into LPL proper, he beat up Jackie Love. <laughs> and he had one of the best 1v9 performances I've seen on this champion. This was last year against the Zeri, which was yeah. so super powered at that point. That's the peak of what this guy can do on this champion. But he needs to try and find some of that again. He's gone for the Cull first start, okay. and which means that he's likely gone for Cut Down in Runes. Now, this is pretty... Actually, this is pretty intelligent, because um, when you go towards the Smolder as well, you do often get yourself a little bit of HP. Now, Aphelos is not going to build any HP in his in his kit. Uh, none of his items are going to give him that. But as you can see, there's Bloodlines on to Photic there as well, and you can see the Cut Down coming in from 1xn, which means that um, Smolder won't get any extra damage against the Aphelios, but Aphelos will get a full damage against everyone else on the other team. Everyone builds a little bit of HP, besides the karma. That's worth noting. I appreciate that. And I think it's a little micro thing. And it does make sense. Again, 1xN's win rate will be deceptive. It doesn't look good, but if you, his actual in-game performance has often been really excellent. It feels sometimes that he's been a bit cursed, frankly, on the yeah. champion. Like, his LDL team was a little inconsistent, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> he was by far the star well, of say, the team. Say how it is. Um, he was by far the star of the team. I, I, I think that's reasonable to say. And, and it often meant that he would have to try and win out of ridiculous 1v5 yeah. scenarios on Aphelios. And sometimes he'd do it, and often he wouldn't quite have enough of the deck. Problem is, um, you know, we can talk a lot about this champion, and it's worth talking about the comfort on this as well, but I just look at NIP's comp right. and I think, how the hell do you play this game? You're going to get locked down so easily, and they're going to have to have themselves a very dominant early lane. It's not, it's, you know, they get the early level two, it's fine. They don't have a jungler that's going to be 3v3ing very actively towards bot side, I don't think, because I don't think they can force the 3v3 against the Smolder and the Nautilus. I think they're happy to just sit backwards. They also don't have a mid lane that's going to roam down, and so even though you have the, the Shin Sao with the early game, I just don't know whether TT can really force 3v3 bot side. And that gives me some worries, because if this gets to level, level six, one to two items beyond that too, mm -hmm. and TT don't have themselves a big advantage. I think they lose out on a lot of the big fights beyond that point. Oof, I saw Hoya go in there for the, uh, the usual Renekton trade pattern with the EW combo, and then ends up just eating a flame spitter for the entirety of it. It's not a fun experience for the Renekton. Now, sometimes we haven't even seen um, press the attack on Exxon just to just to go for the the very bursty first trade, and then just get the hell out of dodge. Um, now, Renekton has had a couple of buffs recently, too. Uh, he's had some extra Q healing come through, which is very important versus Rumble, actually. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, Shanji pick up the... In fact, in this game especially, I think actually an early um, execution, not the execution, it's calling the Oblivion Orb. Yeah. It'll be very valuable here, particularly because one of the ways that 1xN could be looking to outplay as well is through Severum a little later. We haven't talked about these junglers, though, as we kind of get more into the nitty-gritty of here and now. I think that NIP and TT, both of them are teams which have... 
not necessarily been explosive. I think that the LPL as a whole has slowed down besides some notable teams like BLG and uh, particularly FPX as well. OMG is up there as well. But these two teams, they have been kind of content to wait for a point in power and then play around that. And that does mean that we're kind of just chilling a little bit while these junglers do their first close. It's worth keeping our eyes on. Um, and especially considering who the junglers are. I think base one slightly, you know, newer maybe is a way of putting it in some ways and like he when, when we were talking about him before you think actually he is quite exciting to watch but sometimes gets a little bit caught in his own head and i'm looking at the other side of aki a player who you were kind of raising some questions about the level of his performance this year when you have said what have been the weaknesses on ap honestly aki and shanji haven't really linked up with the other members of nip in the way you've been hoping for they have not looked like the omg of last year you know, Beitran, I wouldn't call him a rookie, that's the thing, yeah, and, and, I, I, know, and I know you're not, I know, I know you're not, but like, um, you know, you look at how, you know, he's coming to this, this league as well, he's, he's been around since 2021, so this is his third year in LPL proper, Aki's been around um, a little longer, he's been around a couple of years, and the thing is, which is very, th this is one of my favourite stats, so Shanji and Aki are one of our most beloved duos in the LPL itself, every single game that Shanji has played in the LPL, regardless of team, whether that's OMG or NIP, has been with Aki in the jungle they've played you know they played they've played like a few hundred games together now of course since shanji has been around here for a little while now uh, of course most of that was on um omg but now coming over to the ninjas in pajamas as well um they're keeping that duo alive for now Indeed, trying their very best and they are hoping for a bit of a revival in form plus nip at seven and four which was the score line of fbx yesterday and now they've um well, just beaten up jdg which is a little bit of a <laughs> you've got a bit of sweat on nip's back because their direct rivals are looking real hot right now whereas nip have gone from i think were they six and one it's kind of been on a bit of a downward trajectory since then I'm trying to remember if they were in yeah there was something like that they definitely had uh, a lot of those wins the ult comes out in mid lane another q could be a death of him she's gonna learn rookie to go in for the w trade get some healing back and yukal actually eats a fairly ugly trade in return a little bit sad missing the uh, grim visage there to try and force rookie to back away and uh this mid lane matchup is not necessarily the most interactive early but you can see that they're both trying to force each other onto bad backs if they can they're not really looking for the kill i mean yukal actually potentially could have done but realistically what you're trying to do is force them out of lanes they can't get themselves to that bigger break point Close on the kill there, but not going to seal that one out. Yukal goes back to base. Uh, the worst for wear, considering he started that trade in a good amount. Yeah. Well, the top end replay going on as well. Looks like Renekton hit the, the Dominus, went for a bit of a trade, and didn't get as much as they were hoping. That's uh, a uh, little bit unfortunate. If you get a good enough burst trade, you can force Shanji to back. Of course, he doesn't have the teleport run the Ignite, and it will be the Ignite Scorch early kill pressure. If you overstep into this champion, you're going to get burned to a crisp. And... Uh, Shanji knows how to do that one. He's got himself um, Steel Cap's first first item. I think that makes a lot of yep. sense. Grand majority of the damage coming to him from Beichuan, who can kind of roam towards lane or Hoya. Is uh, gonna be. It's good for him to turn around. Shout out to Chocho, sir. He's a real one. Comes in, holds the wave, takes a bit of damage from Rookie to ensure that Yukal can get his reset without losing his minions. Feels real good. <laughs> it does. Uh, thing is, holding waves, all this stuff. It's all well and good. What the hell's happening with the smolder, Sam? Because we've had a very quiet early game, and we're looking at the smolder and just saying, well, oh, what's gonna good happen here? flash. Tries to keep himself safe. One XN actually gets to level six now. Can start turning it around. Has got himself Severum to work with. Can start to turn around with the onslaught as well. Flash and Ghost pop, but does stay alive. Aki burns the Flash and the ultimate to get on top of the AD carry. So that's, uh, I'm not going to call it a swing and a miss because the summoners away from 1xN are very valuable. You can see that 1xN actually blew the Ghost earlier as well in one of the earlier trades. So he has no summoners for the moment. And they managed to get themselves to a decent CS lead, but they'll get, and he does have a cull ticking in. So Ophelos will be hitting his first items a little easier than Photic. It hasn't been truly shutting down the Smolder. I know for another AD carry, you'd say, oh, this is a very bad situation. Because it's Smolder, is it really? Um, it feels like you can do an awful lot more even with that kind of break point. Shanji, has a knight still? Hoy, oh, you need to be careful, but he has Dominus. Might be forced to blow it. Flash as well. Oh, he's got the Dominus. He uses it. There's still potential. I'm afraid it's back, but it's not going to come through. NIP, a bit of damage in the mid lane as well as Rookie is on the wrong end of a spiraling despair. But Yukal has been throwing out very freely on cooldown, in fact, to try and just maintain control of the wave.
Uh, you're just trying to stop Rookie just perma pushing, getting the items which he wants. See that Yukal here M takes the trade just before the cannon wave comes in. You do this because it's harder to clear a cannon wave unless you're against something like a Malzahar mm -hmm. or something like an Aurelia too. Some of these champions will just kind of clear waves for free if you give them free access to it. But as you can see, you know the cannon's going to go, going to go into turret. He's going to lose one melee. The cannon will kind of go into turret here. Yukal will be back in time for it, particularly since you, with where you get the the QW as well. So he chooses the right time to take the trade to get the recall to get himself back into lane. That's that's mid lane basics for you. Folks. Nicely, nicely managed there by you, Cal. And I was about to shout out as well the bot side by one extent. It's actually nice to find himself about 20 odd CS here. I think it's dropped a little bit after the trade and he had to back, but no, it's actually it's actually grown a little. No, because because right now he's shoving the wave into Turk. Because I did have a little chat about that before and said, hey, it's about 15 CS, and we'll see what happens with that. They're pushing the wave in, and um, you can see that because Photos has been pushed off lane, it's actually grown. Okay, because I thought he dropped it when he went back and then it just gained it again. Anyway, they've had to summon the ultimate now from Photek. We'll do a fair amount there. The plate goes down as well, and 1XM with two plates and sizable CS lead. Actually, 10 CS off cashing in the cold. Playing out the lane itself pretty well. I don't know whether it's shut smolder down exactly, but the Aphelios, on the other hand, has been allowed to scale freely and slightly better so far. Yeah, but again, it's really going to be a question of what you do at that first item breakpoint. We've talked an awful lot about, okay, it's a good lead, but what does this lead to in terms of how do you capitalize on it? Because if you don't close out a game, well, smolder does smolder things. Yes. And we've seen that plenty of times beyond this point now. So, Tsuyaki has his ult back available. You can potentially have the Vi Rumble combo combo if Hoya steps out of position. He doesn't have his Dominus for the next few seconds. They'd have to force a fight very quickly to make the use of that. But I think Hoya, he knows he's under threat potentially. Oh no, he's going in even without that. Oh boy. Hoya, buddy, you got to be a little careful here. Dominus back up now though. And the timing window somewhat elapsed. Yeah, and that does mean that Hoya clears the wave under tower. Aki will roam with his jung with his top laner towards the grubs. Three grubs were picked up earlier by NIP. Dragon did go down for Thundertalk Gaming, so that's been the trade of objectives so far. This would be six, but Thundertalk want to play for this. Here we go. Okay, so, there's a Maokai ult. Those can be very, very powerful for starting off fights. As it stands, they're just walking at them menacingly, and it's been working out okay for them. Eddie carries left alone in a 1v1 on bot side while, with, while this is happening. Keep that in mind, because... With 1XN having Shiv now, which has been a big um, item for Aphelios as recently, yeah. weirdly, can help a lot. But actually, NIP are now going towards bot side, maybe looking for a, a cross map. 1XN sees Aki, then don't. Well, they might have a teleport from Renek, and they might have to pull it early, though, depending on whether the trigger is pulled. I feel like there was a dive angle there. They are still hanging around. All right, here we go. 1XN has got himself utility ultimate teleport coming in themselves. About to be a 1v2. There's the depth charge. The binding eclipse option would have been scary. So teleport for teleport and Photic actually flap, flap, flap away. And the dive is thwarted with the use of a couple teleports on either side. Okay, so 1XN survives the uh, cross map. Now Shanji has himself some free time on top tower because they forced the player on bot side. So NIP, no credit to them, they set up a couple of players in a row. They couldn't get themselves the, the grubs prior in the way that they wanted. Teleport was cancelled in the mid lane, which maybe um, informed the dive attempts uh, from NIP and said, ah, okay, we have, we have now been informed, we will not have our full members. Let's not. Let's, Let's not, not throw that. it at them. That's a bad idea. What that does mean, though, is that 1XN um, gets to cash out his cult. He's going to go back now. Interested to see if he can get himself to full boots. I think I think boots, too, are really powerful in this game, actually, because of the amount of folks trying to run at you and pin you down with those big ultimates. It can help you out play just a little bit. I think he stayed too far, hasn't he? Okay, he gets the wave. The air flash. Ult. He's in trouble now. He has gone too far. Flash for the W. The onslaught. Not quite out of range. He is. He pops the gun. Goes away with it! Pops the ghost, but he's no! Saying, no! Wait, the healing! He's still playing! What exit gets away with it? That is some pretty close run stuff. You can see that Aki is now going like, hang on, buddy, you can't walk up like this. And he gets away with he it. Can. Just all the same. <laughs> and he can just about. He doesn't have his... He doesn't end up blowing his flash. I don't think he had it to, to blow in that play. And Aki, in this early game, you know, Aki has so often been the player that will just full send it. But in this game, he's been trying to be very aggressive and force plays where he can. It hasn't been quite so easy. Onyxen now goes back and buys a Dirk. Oh, now that's interesting because the thing about Aphelios is that he's become very powerful now that lethality has been changed to the flat armor penetration yeah. rather than scaling up. Now, if he ends up maxing out his um, lethality to the point where we've even seen some triple tonic Aphelios as well, where, um, you know, we've seen him kind of like match out, max out that uh, lethality a little earlier into the game. And then you go the collector as well. There is no one on the other side of the rift which will be able to survive a big burst from a failure set the two item mark. So I think that's the power spike which TT are aiming for. Let's see if NIP can survive that and get to their two to three item power spike where the smolder starts to take over again.
That's what they have to deal with, because uh, the answer for TT into the smolder has been, look, we're going to try and match scaling with one of the OG carries of the of, of the modern year. You know, instead of Felios was first, and Zeri came a little later, but those modern AD carries have been so rampant when they've released. And Aphelios... Anyone else remember the Samira pentakills oh, as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 200 years. The Aphelios meme for a reason, and that's what they <laughs> had to go towards. Now, I was talking about the Samira one, because remember the Collector one with the oh, old there? Oh, well. that was so... That, so that is, I'm not going to contest that's also 200 years, but it's attributed to a different thing. Rookie gets himself out safely, and he's not going to be um, under threat that much. Chotra has flash. I don't know if you get... He has alt W. This is quite ambitious. Which one's going to come on down? Misses the wind, becomes lightning. That's unfortunate. And Rookie gets to walk away. They will, however, potentially get the turret for this as a result. Uh, they will, and the cross map is basically just grubs. And you see the NIP, or Herald rather. So NIP have four grubs. They don't have the five, but they're going to have themselves the Herald as well. That's important. Maybe that can secure um, some tower gold. Um, maybe if they can slam it into mid lane and get that open, that gives them a vision advantage as well. And of course, ninjas love themselves vision advantage because ninjas shouldn't be seen. You exactly. say it's their specialty some would say um, and they've got themselves that herald now to potentially help them in that regard that's exactly it <laughs> they are going to uh, have to play with the shadows and some ninjutsu trying to make it happen of course it's slightly ironic that they're running with a giant mech I feel that maybe that's a little bit too oh, anime no, well, no, well that it, 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 did you ever did you ever see um, did you ever see Batman Ninja no, I it was. It good, I, I actually really enjoyed it. So for those of you that don't know, there was a 3D animated movie called Batman Ninja, oh, no. and Batman at one point was in fact in a giant Batman mech suit in, in feudal Japan. Oh, it was awesome. Now here comes the uh, the Batman Ninja on the top side. Uh, there's a red carpet rolled out, and the crocodile throws down the drums. Just gets away with it. Aki just cannot find anybody. <laughs> That's three ults, I think, for nothing gained yep. from Aki. He has been trying, but I have to say, it has felt like it has been Aki alone. I don't think that Dro has really been a big playmaker so far. Uh, one of the hook from him. One of the big. And, and that's a big problem, right? Because one of the things about LPL is that we've seen a shift away from, you know, you mentioned earlier in Genji T1, we still saw the, the Lulus and we saw, um, you know, some of the Namis as well, ranged supports. Now, they don't force fights as early as um, melee supports do. Now, what ranged supports do is they bully out lane and they end up giving you a really big kind of controlling factor just by brutalizing you in a 2v2. Melee supports get out of the 2v2 and then they force things when your jungler's around. They force things when they run to mid lane. We haven't seen that here in this game, despite the fact that the LPL has been trying to prioritize these melee supports more and more. And that's a little bit worrying because now TT, um, you know, they have themselves two dragons. They're getting towards the two item mark. And I feel like TT can actually start forcing fights now, which is going to be a bit of an issue. That is going to be the problem, right? Because you've got 20 seconds until the dragons, the fights are being forced now. Not, not when Smolder's got stacks. And the other thing is, one of the other ways you beat Smolder is just force soul against him. If you get soul against him before Smolder comes online, he's like backing off and be a break point. Okay, so dragon coming up. Mountain soul on the mountain rifts, and TT have two of them already. They're also going to get themselves into river first, but there's a herald into mid lane. Now, NRP might be okay trading this dragon, even with a bit of a grimace, for a mid lane turret. So TT, they do not want to give this one up for free. Hook lands onto Chocho. That's a big amount of damage. Chocho throws down. The ultimate gets a fair amount of healing back, but dies for it. Spiraling despair onto Aki, who cannot get far enough away, so jungler for support trade likely no Sundered sky healing keeps him alive for a moment but not for long enough and thunderstorm win out in terms of the value of the player killed uh, so you don't have a smite now for an ip so you are going to give over soul point you don't get yourself that mid lane out of turret either which would have been a great prize for them considering the state of this game it will give them some kind of uh, platform to play the rest of the game off of and they are really now just waiting for photo to come and save them this is going to be a difficult game for them if aki and Joel are not able to start off the fight in the way that they really want to. It was a hook finally from Droid to start that one off, but really look at how um, Photic is, is kind of um, positioning in this fight and contributing as well. He's not really putting out big damage at this moment in time. He can do a little bit, but this is not Smolder's time just yet. Whereas on the other side, one XM, good all from him to just kind of dissuade the extra clump from going forwards. Get the value there. Costs a couple summoners, but they get value themselves. They've got the turret, they've got soul point. They have just got a second item on the Ophelos, who has gone for the collector, so it is that lethality build. Uh, on the other side, Yukal being jumped on. This might actually be finally a combined Yay! armed response <laughs> and the carpet bombing links up with the land assault and nip get themselves a second kill hooray blood death 
and it's very fun stuck under the turret. Uh, he has a crescent guard. He has a crescent guard. They don't have. Ult. I, I don't think this is this good, is folks. There comes the crescent guard. I, they might get away with this, you know. I think Peshwa dies, doesn't he? Uh, he does eventually. G guys, what? seriously, that was a, a bit of an overstay there from Beitron. It feels like with Sundered Sky and Ultimate, he can buy up a lot of time. The cross map is going to be a turret on top side. So, okay, you know, I'm going to take it back. It's going to be a turret trade, and it's going to be the kill on the bot side of the map as well. There's no other cross maps available. So, NIP, they get the extra little value out of that. For a second, though, I just thought, hey, you've just used your ultimates. Hmm. But actually, Rookie teleporting in, as we can see beyond this, too. Maybe at the end of that play, comes in with the alt W. It's just a nasty amount of CC. Starts, though, with Aki finally getting himself linked up with Draw. This is one of the first times that we've really seen that. Draw ends up just going for the full CC into the equalizer, roasted to a crisp. Yeah, I think that's what he ended with the, the Molten Fisher downfall. I wonder whether he was looking for the uh, the, pa the fleeting path instead. I wonder whether that was a slight misplay. I don't know. Uh, they're not in the same ability. So no, I know, but they are. That would be the QE and then I believe the E, the e for the... Yes, um, exactly. So I, wonder, I, I don't know whether he didn't have... Actually, I don't know whether he didn't have it available or not, but it would have been... I, I wonder. That's all I The thing is, though, if they're stuck on... So if someone is stuck in it for a long time, the Molten Fisher is the highest damage you can get. That's that, 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 That's not... Yeah, that's, that's not the walk along. So, Maybe I'm overthinking that one. You might be right. The only time I'll ever say that someone's picked the wrong thing is that when they pick the wrong thing out of this, the, the one of the three classes that they've already done. So you have the damage, you have the CC, and then you have the utility as well. Um, and I can't remember which one the utility and the CC is. Is it E? W, w is, C is utility. Okay, right, right. So yeah, it would have been the W, then, not the E. Yes, it is W. You know, that just reminds me of that one meme of the, the EA Sports. The e, E, E. E, 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 E. <laughs> that is, if you ever wonder what goes through my head when nothing's happening on the map, as it is right now, that, um, that, right there. That's it. That's a part of it. It's not all of it. It's, but, a, it's um... a scary place inside Nightmare's head. Hang on, yeah, go. it is. One XM flashes out of the equalizer. We'll try to turn things around a little bit now. Has got himself to finding clips. Double flashes down. Smolder Ooh. ultimate across. Multiple members. Smolder. 170 okay. stacks as it stands. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is now, um, you know, we were talking about how TT, they had a position to force fights. They had the two items coming up. They're on Soul Point and they have themselves two item mark right now. And they haven't been able to force fights. It's been Aki again controlling the pace of the game. And now TT have to be seriously worried because this is their point of power and they're not really getting much. In fact, they've lost a kill on bot side. Mm. They've potentially could have lost a fight in that top jungle, which could have led towards Baron as well. NIP, they managed to get themselves even in gold again. So it looks like TT, they are playing towards Soul instead of towards anything else. And I wonder if this is now going to be a problem because this is when they're supposed to be winning the goddamn fights. Soul, as I understand it, would be one of the major ways to defeat Smolder. It's one of the things, if you can just stack dragons fast enough, you can kind of get that incredible advantage before he comes online. And realistically, this will be your option. Still not going to be at the 225 stacks, but given another five minutes after that, he likely will be, especially this far into the game. It gets incrementally easier to get those stacks. Yeah. So this is your moment. It is. It's a little bit slow on the stacking. I think normally around 21 minutes, you want to be around about, I'd say about 200 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a little bit behind that. He's getting towards that about now, but it really depends on how much extra access to farm you can give him and access to champions too, because it's about killing the minions with the Q and then also hitting enemy champions with abilities. It's not going to be too slow. <laughs> and as we see him go back, I would imagine he's going to pick up a zeal. I don't think he'll be able to pick up the full fat cannon. Indeed, that is so. Really need to see one xn get into a position where his team can support him to play around this item breakpoint. I wonder if it'll come around that next dragon. I think next dragon will be the breakpoint for this game. So 40 seconds to determine game one. Both these AD carries funneled so much farm as well, well over the 10 CS a minute mark. Both ready and willing to start fighting this one out. Two items apiece, two and a half items apiece, ready to go, ready and willing to fight. This is the break point. If Thunder Talk get Mountain Soul, they're hoping that's enough to push them over the line. And there's an argument that it isn't even because you're against the Smolder who does just a ridiculous amount of damage and won't care too much for that beyond that point. But even though that's what they've built towards and that means that they can at least get themselves a big objective for that TT. They're forced out of River, which is strange for them because they have the Shiv on a fellow else as well. This is meant to be the wave control item. This is actually quite worrying. You shouldn't be giving up this much pressure. Dragon has just spawned and TT, they're on the wrong side of things right now. They found their way through bot side, using saplings to check a little bit. But these objective setups, this is one of my big issues in the LPL. A lot of our teams have struggled to get clean objective setups. Things get messy after that point. Shanji now has flash, ult, ignite, he's on the side. 
Alright, here on the other, they've got some very deadly combos to work with. Can Shanji find the ultimate he needs? Number one XM, no flash. Could still be very vulnerable. The hook lands. It's onto Jure alongside the spiraling spare. Equalizer comes on through a Shanji to the backside. Flashes on in onto one XM who cannot survive. Dead to rights. On the other side, yes, the Nautilus dies, but the damage, it's already done. Dragon's ignored. Look at Photic though. That dragon you can't ignore. The turnaround damage though is actually pretty excellent. Yukal survived. Base one still got options to go forwards. They put everything into murdering 1XN, and they do get the soul. Now how much can they do to run around as the execute finally comes in from Photic as it uh, partway through the fight. is hit with a wind, becomes lightning. Base one breaks the tether, and they'll back away. Thunder Talk win the fight just about, and get the soul, despite the early pick from NIP. Yeah, uh, that's the early pick in that fight. Onto the AD carry, you would have thought with the Fellas down, the damage could not come through from TT, but that's just not the case. As we go back into this replay, you can see that the initial combo from the ninjas is actually quite successful. You can see that uh, the spiraling despair kind of stops Draw from getting into the mix of things, but one extent gets absolutely brutalized. Thing is, on the other side of things, Hoyer and Beichuan stop Photic and Rookie from being able to follow up for the rest of the fight. So despite the fact that the AD carries down on one side, the front line from TT buys them enough time to make up the difference. And Yukal remains untouched. Yukal does a lot of work, and that is enough to win them the fight. Photic at the end of it, it's a little bit scary. So they still end up in the back way as somehow, some way, the Maokai gets caught with a little bit of splash damage and goes down. And it's a couple kills over to Photic in trade, which should scare you. If you're a TT fan, yeah. they do, however, now have the Mountain Soul, and that might be the prize that they required anyway. Yeah, you know what that means, Sam? It means the game's going to slow down a little bit, because we're going to go see NIP say, Oh, we have three items of Spalder, but oh, oh no, they have resists now. We must need four items. We must need, we must find it. We must we must find the legendary item, the Lord Dominic's regards. We must we must get Armour Shred potential from our dragon. Look, pray. It's, <laughs> it's going via the German post. It's never turning up at your flat. It's in one of the neighbours. You've got to wait to find where the okay, Dominic's right. regards went. So, hang on. Context on that. My brother and I here, um, we live in Berlin, um, and the postal service here has, it's upset us a few times as well. <laughs> We've had to go on, it's like doing a, like a little like um, geocaching kind of event to try and find out where, you, where your post has gone. Delivered, yeah. Well, we'll see if NIP are any experts at the uh, the geocaching game, and see if they can find some more items. They are potentially looking to get some vision over this mid lane, but the fight does not really erupt. Flaps over the wall, and uh, gets themselves sped up. There's the equalizers, the Ooh, turnaround God. damage is brutal! Smolder can't quite find the execute, the flash away from Yukal and Chocho, but the ultimates are enough to dissuade anything more than summoners going down. So, um, if anyone was out there thinking, does the Mountain Assault make TT unkillable? No. No, it doesn't. The damage from NIP is absolutely absurd at this point. And, um, you do have some decent tank stats brought up across multiple members of TT, and we're even going to get a Zonya's through from Yukal, which will help in that regard. But NIP have so much mixed damage as well, and there's no real true tank. I mean, Crescent Guard notwithstanding, but that doesn't benefit the Mountain Assault anyway. Um, that, yeah, TT, even with the Soul, um, they're probably getting outscaled. Again, this is why I was, on, I was worried for them when they weren't forcing fights around the two items. Koya has a more. He will be pretty tanky. I just don't think it's enough to oversee what's going to come through from, uh, you know, the Rumble and the Smolder huge team fight damage. Sounds got to be close to completing his third item here. You've got to imagine that would be a fairly big break point as well. The third item on the Athelios has forever been a huge thing for him. Not quite there yet. Third item not in for Yukal either. And it has been relatively slow affair for the LPL. Um, rookie shoving out this top side and two and a half odd minutes till Elder Baron's up. Neither teams really felt willing to even start a Baron bait as yet and the, the Infinity Age mm. now completed for 1XN. He's once again at a very high point of power. I mean, so this is where Sam, um, we talk about not my favourite topic in school but mm. in League of Legends I'm quite interested in it. It's geography. Ah. Let's talk about geography because if you're a red side team you look at those walls up there in the top left hand corner of that Baron pit um, you don't want to be pinned against them. You don't want to be pinned against that that choke point which Beitran has currently stood as well. Going into Baron Pit, in particularly the uh, the all-seeing Baron as we see in this rift as well with the long walls, uh, as a red side team is absolutely hellish. Now do that against a heavy wombo combo um, CC into damage team, um, that's just death. So TT, yeah. they don't want to start it. And on the other side, NIP, they don't really have a true tank to tank Baron and they really need Shanji there to be the Baron DPS as well where he'd like to really be on the flank threatening something. So neither team has 
Rockets currently found themselves a solution to this. Rookie's called out potentially in a side lane. Uh, he throws a Q back and uh, barely breaks the Kernic Rookie shield. In fact, he doesn't manage to complete that. God damn, Baytron's tanky. Is a bit, and uh, what I will say is, uh, ironically, it's probably easier to steal Baron from red side because you can use the wall as kind of uh, a prevention of, of teams trying to block you from getting, and you can just flash over the wall, jump over the wall, blast going over. It's easier to steal, perhaps harder to start more traditionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, not gonna lie, Sam. Yeah. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. Getting a bit bored, Sam. I know, I know, I am Sam, too. I, I'm I, talking about I, geography on someone's rift. Yeah, I. I need, I need warfare, Sam. I need blood. I need conflict. Um, I don't know whether Do this I is a need failing. To put this out of context, or should I just leave that statement? You, you, as you it leave, is. you leave it for what it is, Sam. <laughs> I, I'm sat here and. You know, Sam, I grew up with Warhammer 40,000. I grew up with Warhammer Fantasy. I was never a Chaos player. I have had, though, once in a while, inclinations, inclinations towards uh, the bloody-handed god of Cain and to the god of Chaos and Warfare, Corn himself. Cornflakes. Cornflakes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we've had that. We should make so many different League of Legends related food stuff as well. We have the Milky Way course. That one's easy. Oh, that's trademark. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. We should just, we should look for like, just get different gaming food stuff. The Cornflakes, I can definitely work towards that. Um, I'd like some fighting. Sam, I'm running out of material here. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, how do we entertain the masses, Alex? Is it time to bring out Hangman know, once more? <laughs> wait, wait, you call for it. Blood yes, might be a blood. Order. At least a Baron start. Here we go. Okay, good weapons for Warnex, and he has the rifle turrets, and here comes potentially a Baron start. Will they turn for a fight? Not sure, taking a little bit low, but the shielding turns come on through. The equalizer is in. One XN healing up, not taking that low. Baron goes Stolen! down! Stolen by Aki! Blood! By yes! All of the zone control! Hoya turns up, bizarrely on a flank to get 1v4 and died. And Aki gets out alive, Thunder Talk! That was abysmal! Blood for the Blood God, skulls for the skull throne, oh, and ninjas have no. come to fight! And Thunder Talk is just left in the wake of the ninja's lightning. Photic just eviscerates a few people on the way out. Shanji puts on the afterburners. Flame roast base one for a little bit to little avail, but that is likely the end of the game. A barren steal, a bad retreat, and Thunder Talk fall to the wayside. Now, NIP, game one victors. Now, if you're wondering why we were saying, ooh, TT, do you want to wait for Mountain Soul? Maybe fight around your two items instead. It's because of this. They are eclipsed in damage. They are eclipsed at the Baron, and game one goes to the ninjas. Thunder Talk Gaming on only four series wins will be having their heads in their hands after game one. They cannot afford to lose games like this. NIP, it's a step towards a sigh of relief for them. It was a pretty tepid affair at large portions. Pretty slow, and then one Baron fight. Aki gets in, steals the Baron, one, and then TT failed the retreat. One extent doesn't even press R. No real option to do that. The Aphelios never really got to put out anything resembling DPS in these team fights. Yukal tried a bit, but in the end, NIP just come online, steal a Baron, and Fotic gets to breathe fire on people. Yeah. So we're going to leave that there for game one. Thank you very much for joining us in our um, English cast co-stream. TT, I, I am I'm really quite worried for them if they can't fight around that kind of to my item mark. That that's the kind of composition where with the Phalios, with the with the collector, especially against quite a squishy team, you need to be looking for proactive fights with the Mark ultimate. They never really did that. They slowed down, and that's why we had some fun in the mid and late game because we were saying, well, okay, where are these fights? And you know, we're trying to be entertaining in that front too. But there's a more concerning issue there, which is where TT they should have been forcing fights and they couldn't and it let NIP get to the point where they were the ones in control of the real damage check later on. And when they did have those points passed, they never really got that much value from the dragon fights. They're actually on the whole NIP got away with one fight where it went three for two all the other ones. Relatively you know, even stuff. They didn't get that much in the way of the turrets and then they go for this Baron start. They look like they should have secured it. The zone control's in there. Aki gets in regardless and then they burned all the ultimates disengaging as they have nothing at all that alright rather defending the Baron they have nothing to disengage after. And now you look at game two and you think, well, TT, um, you let the smolder through. Yeah. Um, you have to have a good answer to it. And frankly, they didn't. Um, you can see that Hoya did. Hoya was not in a great position to do much because he was meant to be on the weak side. But Hoya, even then, 
I'm 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 quite worried by how little impact he had. I think Hoya has continually been a bit of a point concern from TT on the top side of the map. And just as a whole, Beichuan and Chocho couldn't really force fights. No. I, I wonder if they have to pick themselves. I well, I don't even know because normally so you pick yourself something like the Nautilus or something like that yourself, but you have a Maokai to start fights. This is a big issue for them. On the other side, I think Aki in the early game was not that precise. No. I think that particularly draw was not willing to kind of go with him, which was a bit of a big issue there actually thinking about it. Um, but eventually they ended up pulling the trigger well. They are... NIP are not a team that plays particularly fast, but when they hit their obvious break points, they are quite good at playing through them in the late game. Yeah. And luckily this time, TT gave them the breathing room to do that. 